Hi, hello, welcome to the episode of Isaiah's Newsstand. It's your host, Isaiah Edwards. The date is August the 29th, 2024. Hopefully this episode finds you well in good spirits and high hopes. As for me, I'm doing pretty good. Work went by pretty swimmingly. I came in and there was literally like, like to start my day, there was like maybe three or four cardboard buggies for me to do, which I actually never really tell you guys what my usual workload looks like, maybe on like a busy day. Usually on a busy average day, that's like, okay, I know I can handle this. This isn't like extreme. Usually I come in and it's about maybe 12, 12 to 16 tops. If it's anything like beyond that, then I know like, oh, okay, that's a crazy day. I'm about to be here in one place for the whole day, not moving, just mashing cardboard. Um, so to see four is like, oh, this is going to be a cakewalk. And sure enough, it was. So we love to see that. It was a good day. Vibes are nice. They were tight. Um, we'll say I walked in on uh, some of the coworkers uh, talking about Trump or whatever, which is, you know, kind of fun. A little pre-segue because we are going to be talking about Trump pretty soon. Um but they were like, you know, yada, 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 yada. And then I came in and like I could tell like my vibe kind of makes it a little bit awkward because they know I'm not a Trump fan. But I'm also like pretty reserved about it. Like I'm not here to like argue with them or anything. So I just let them finish their conversation, of course. And then like just started up on another tangent when I felt like they had finished. But it was like funny, awkward for me. I was kind of listening to my shit. I'm, like, I'm listening to some podcast, you know, other ears just listening to them talk about blah, 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 America. Anyway. Uh, let's see here. Food corner, not much to report. I uh, did a little scrava- scravaging, S- scavenging. I cannot speak. I'm not. I've, I couldn't say continuity the other day. I was talking to a friend and I couldn't say the word continuity, and uh, I felt like an idiot. But um, yeah, we had some popcorn. I, I finished off the rest of that creator's popcorn. I had the cheesy caramel popcorn. Oh, so yummy. Um, I had some peanuts, so, you know, a little forging, you know, it was nice, it was good, it was, it was okay. <laughs> uh, let's see, also, I will say, I had some St. Vicky's jalapeno chips, those are my favorite kettle chips, y'all. Like, if you ain't fucking with St. Vicky's, you ain't fucking with kettle chips, if, 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 that's my opinion. I, there are probably better, um, kettle chips out there, uh, there's a brand that's kind of escaping me that they kind of make some funky ass things that's kind of fun. But um, really, though, St. Vicky's will always have a place in my heart because I used to get the St. Vicky's and a fucking foot long back when they were five dollars. And um, my night would be good. I'd be solid with that. You know what I mean? Is the bread real? Who cares? All right. <laughs> I'm eating fresh. Shut the fuck up. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and do our startup. Yeah, I'm thinking it's time to do that. And uh, let's get into some news. Uh, Also, hopefully you checked out the uh, little baby episode I kind of had. You know, I kind of threw that in there. Hopefully you didn't miss that on your feed. Hopefully you're subscribed. I don't want to say subscribed, but I mean, if it's YouTube, please subscribe. You know, that's free. But hopefully you're following, you know, you're fucking with whatever platform you're on. So you're keeping up with my Joneses, you know. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I say, fuck it. We're going to just go again and again. Actually, I've never done three episodes in a day. That sounds insane. Um, That sounds very unhinged. (laughs) All right, let's do this startup. I'm yapping. All right. Like I said, speaking of Trump, he made some waves um, this week. Um, from Politico, unfairly attacked, Army defense employee involved in Trump campaign incident at Arlington. The Army is defending an Arlington National Cemetery official involved in an incident with the Trump campaign this week at the National Memorial, saying the woman was abruptly pushed aside and unfairly attacked by Trump staffers and its surrogates. The unidentified female staff member has declined to press charges due to concern over retaliation. And the Army, which runs national cemeteries, said in a statement uh, Thursday morning that it considers the matter closed. So I just want to stop right here, right? Because I find this crazy that, like, the Trump team, the Trump campaign is seemingly, since the Biden uh, 
uh, Trump debate, and then since Biden has left, more specifically, ever since then, they have, like, found ways to, like, shoot the dog. As I, I hate to br- dredge that back up, but if you know, you know. It, it's just crazy what they're doing to this campaign. In a situation where literally all you really had to do is, quote-unquote, stand on business, just hang on your fucking shitty draconian ass policies and say hey we're gonna bring this shit back we're gonna make america great again instead like trump has like shifted to these like weird fucking personal attacks that really don't hit and they haven't landed to like not sticking to policy because once again he gets bored with that shit and i think he thinks maybe the audience is getting bored with it or maybe it's something that is gonna get too rifted over in the news and he just would rather quote unquote be himself and let his little freak flag fly but um then you got J.D. Vance, which was arguably, like, a crazy bad, like, hey, we're just so far up ahead. Let's just get the most weird loser guy who's, like, kind of just like Trump. He wants to be Trump so bad. So, like, let's hit, let's put him on the team and let's call it a day. And, like, this guy is just bad. He's not good, you know. I mean, I'm saying it, and this guy's, like, my fucking senator. Um, boo that man. And his shitty-ass little beard. Uh, but anyway, let, let's get back to... The matter at hand, <clears throat> but I, I do think the thing I wanted to say is it's crazy that like Trump, who I know a lot of people in the army, like at least from what I've kind of talked to and pulled from, you know, surveyed, they seem to really like him, and and like I kind of get that because it's one of those things where it's like there's maybe a bit of a conservative bent to military, you know, service, so you're gonna you know you're gonna kind of stand by your man in that way. I don't know. Um, but even in this situation, like, where you pretty much got in a scuffle with, you know, the Trump team because you were doing your job, you were, you know, do, you know, upholding the law, and this motherfucker brushes you aside, and then they wind up talking shit about you after. And as I mentioned, you're too scared to actually press charges because that's how I read that. They're like, yeah, they, they declined to press charges over retaliation. That is a very specific sentence. You know what I mean? They declined to, you know, press charges because they didn't feel like it was worth it. That's a whole other thing. You know what I'm saying? Um... But this kind of goes into what I was saying about the Vance part, because he comes out and he's like, yeah, this is the media doing spin. It's like, no, dude, like, you guys all know the rules. You were literally informed before you even did this little fucking press thing that, like, hey, don't do this. This is, like, against the law. Like, you can't do pressers here. And they're like, nah, we're going to fucking do it. We were invited here by the family, and because of that, that negates the rule, according to us, so that's what we're going with. And it's just that fucking bullheadedness that has seemingly just, once again, it just seems like they're just trying to crash the car at every chance they get. But you know what's fucking crazy? Is that this kind of shit can happen, this can be even a more fucking rodeo clown show of errors, and they can still wind up fucking winning. You know what I mean? Even with Harris up in the polls. That could still wind up being fucking bullshit. Who fucking knows? Um, I should really keep reading. I just wanted to kind of yap about this. Y'all know me. Uh, The Monday incident unfolded as former President Donald Trump attended a memorial service at the uh, the cemetery with families of two service members killed during the U.S. US, I can't believe I almost list list that the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. So, yeah, they were trying to do this for more or less political points because obviously, you know, Trump's been saying that, like, Biden fucked up the Afghanistan withdrawal. He would have done it so much better when it's like we've talked about this before on the pod. This man was literally responsible for setting that shit up and then wanted to turn around and be like, yeah, no, it's Biden's fault that, like, we had to do that evacuation that I set up. That's crazy. All those lives lost, that was his fault. He, I would have done it so much better. And it's like, dog, what are we, what are we saying? What are we doing? But this family has been even at the, the RNC. So, like I said, it does make sense. It does add up that they would invite him to this event. But for him to use this event as a political, like, campaign trail event is just literally against the law like they're like no you can't do that and uh they did it they said fuck it they they posted it on tiktok you know uh with like you know images and video of it and like you know saying like yeah this is biden's fault you know narrated by trump and it's like i mean hey that hits that sound good that sounds good but you could have literally done that from outside the cemetery and it would have worked just the fucking same and that's the shit i'm keep trying to keep like you know you know weaving in here is that they can do this in a way 
that works. But like Trump and, and the team is so maximum effect, so maximum damage about what they do that they have to do it in the most audacious way. And it doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. It's like, no, you're wrong. It's crazy, dude. It's, it's, I'm, I'm probably, I, I skipped it maybe. No, I, I found it. I highlighted it so I wouldn't forget. After news of the incident broke, Trump spokesperson Stephen Chung disparaged the employee as someone's clearly suffering from a mental health episode. Can you imagine that? You're doing your fucking job and you're upholding the law of the fucking land here and they're saying you are having a mental health moment. And I believe he even added that it was despicable or someone even added that this was like they were being despicable or some shit like that. It's like, dude, it, it just it is insane how trump and the whole goddamn team moves dude it, it's always been the most the most irksome thing to me and i know that that's a draw for some people like i said I, I keep i've mentioned before that whole strong man routine i think people really like that they see themselves in that or they at least like a guy that will do the things that they know that they shouldn't do or you know but they want to do and it's like that's gross dog like that, that's not okay like this isn't good politics at all and once again you should feel gross about that like i don't know but yeah here we are and it's still a close race all the same i don't know so i don't think this is really going to change or, or move the needle or anything um they did have some um democrats kind of come up and uh say some quotes i'm gonna read one real quick um can't believe this needs to be said you don't defile sacred ground for americans who gave their all you don't flout the law and rules at arlington national cemetery to score a photo op Representative Chris DeLuzio, um, Democrat of, um, I believe Pennsylvania, is that PA? Uh, I should know that, but whatever, my bad. Um, a former Navy officer who wrote on social media, Donald Trump's disrespect uh, for our war and dead, or our war dead and uh, the law is a disgrace. Um I just wanted to say that just to add that it's like I, I do kind of appreciate that now that we're kind of post Biden, we're now in this Har Harris brat era, whatever the fuck it is. You definitely kind of see more of the Democrats coming out and like doing the, the mudslinging for Harris, which I think is smart. I think it's the way it's supposed to be. Right. You, you definitely still hear and see conservatives doing it. It just it, it definitely feels like it's falling flat now. Like ever since like they got called weird, they've definitely kind of had like a little bit of a mental glitch. Um but um, it, it, I guess I don't want to say it's nice. But once again, I've talked about this before on the pod. And I will continue to say it. The lib in me likes when you see the Democrats come out and play team sports. You know what I mean? They play the fucking game. They play their fucking positions and they do it, you know, quote unquote, well, like good, awesome. Like you at least hope that you see it and you, you get the person that you want to see in, which is for me, not Donald Trump. I've said this before, so. You know what I mean? Do I like these politicians? No, not on either side of the fucking aisle. At the end of the day, they still fuck us and they fuck the world at large. And that fucking makes me sad, mad, and all things in between. But, um, you know, hey, like I said, I'm, I'm down for Harris, Walls, Brat, Summer, bro. I, I'm, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You can boo me if you want. If, if this gets me thrown in my own tomato town, so be it. <laughs> anyway, was there anything else we wanted to pull from here? No, we're going to call it good. Case closed. Um, from NBC News, Israel Hamas agreed to zoned three-day pauses for Gaza polio val uh, vaccinations. Sorry, mush mouth. Um, who or WHO says uh, the United or ugh, the Israeli military and Palestinian militant group Hamas have agreed to three separate zoned three-day pauses in fighting in the Gaza Strip to allow for the vaccination of some 640,000 children against polio. A senior uh, WHO official uh, said on Thursday, the vaccination campaign is due to start on Sunday, said Rick Peppercorn, the World Health Organization, or WHO, uh, senior official for the region. He said the campaign would start in central Gaza with a three-day pause in fighting to move to southern Gaza where there would be another three-day pause, followed by northern Gaza. Peppercorn added that there was an agreement to extend the humanitarian pause in each zone to a fourth day if needed. 
So I'm covering this obviously because it, it needs to be said because we've talked about how like disease has definitely become a growing issue as well as famine on top of the fact that all the lies lost due to this fucking ethnic cleansing that has been going on day after day after fucking day. So the obviously good silver lining here is despite a fucking ceasefire not you know coming together as it fucking should have by now, at least we have this pause where we can at least help the kids that are literally being paralyzed by polio right now. Like, I mean, it's crazy that we're even in 2024 talking about polio like this um, in any country, in any place. But, um, you know, sadly, because of how fucking disparate things have gotten, polio has now become a thing that is growing and becoming a rampant issue in Gaza. So I'm glad that somehow cooler heads have prevailed here. And at least we're getting this like three day um, ceasefire situation or humanitarian pause. I, I, yeah, you definitely got to say humanitarian pause. It's not a ceasefire. Th- though when I say humanitarian pause, I'm like, what? I mean, yeah, but you guys are going to go right back to this and you never know. It, this is definitely going to feel like a powder keg situation. So, you know, um, we'll see how it goes. I really hope that this is at least something and maybe that hopefully with this, we can hopefully maybe even bridge it to more um you know, I don't want to say peace talks, but like just something where we're we're dialing this shit back. You know what I mean? Um, but we'll see. We'll fucking see. Uh, let's see. Was there anything else I really wanted to pull here? No, obviously you can look at the article. It's not too long. So, you know, by all means, you can read it if you would like to. All right. We have one more thing I wanted to cover. Usually I do more stories, but because of how I did yesterday, didn't have as much on the plate. So I was like, yeah, let's go ahead and just run it like so. Um, So this is a story I was sitting on for like a day or so. I figured, hey, let's go ahead and uh, cover it, talk about it a little bit. Um, Put put this up in the Hitman Chronicles, yo. I mean, it's crazy that we keep coming back to the well, and there's always a story for it. But um, you know what I say. Never hire a Hitman. Just don't do it. But yeah, let's go ahead and um, take our last break, and we'll go ahead and close it out. Ooh. Oh boy. Bit off more than I could chew. Oh. Mm. <coughs> Bear with me. Oh <coughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. We're gonna try. From long crime. Cut the bullshit. I'm going to say it. I'm going to fucking say it, dude. No edit. Cut the bullshit. Bank manager caught trying to have brother-in-law murdered with rat poison. And texting receipt claims she's been harassed for 25 years. Whew. So, yes. This was a, you know another never hire a hitman story. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and read through it. Let's chop it up. A bank manager in New York who admittedly plotted to murder her brother-in-law on Facebook Messenger, sent thousands of dollars from a Western Union, uh, Western Union kiosk inside of a Walgreens and texted the receipt on WhatsApp, was sentenced to nearly a decade in federal prison on Tuesday, but not before she claimed to be a victim of a 25-year harassment campaign that started when she didn't marry the man at 15. So that's why I wound up... Uh, running this out of long crime. I initially got this from, like, Odyssey when I heard the story. And, like, it gives you enough of the detail to make you want to read it and, like, go, oh, wow, crazy story. But there's more details that I realized that were in this long crime article. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's go ahead and and run it this way from this perspective because it's a little bit better. Um, But according to the U.S. Attorney's Office of of the Southern District of New York, Reshma Masaroni, now 40, is looking at nine and a half years of federal prison time, or 114 months, um, six months short of what the government sought for the failed plot on her brother-in-law's life between July 23 and August 23, after pleading guilty to the crime in Mm mid-March. Excuse me. Uh, Masseroni 
swore on her kids' lives that she would never betray individual one, described as a year long friend, uh, years long friend of the victim who happened to be a law enforcement officer in Guyana. If he helped orchestrate the murder of her brother-in-law while he was traveling in South America. So this right here is, I'm sorry, but this is bold as hell. Like this guy you're saying is in law enforcement. So I'm assuming like a cop and you're saying, Hey, Mr. Fellow, you know, this guy, you and -and so-and-so are tight. I'm going to pay you. She says $10,000. I'm going to make you a rich man is what she's alluding to here. And I'm sorry. No, you're not. Not in Biden's America. Not with the way fuck inflation works, yo. What is $10,000, man? Like, dude, what is a million dollars these days, man? I'm sorry. So you're saying $10,000 and you want me to do a GTA. And I'm not talking early GTA. We're talking at least mid, mid game fucking main quest type mission shit, bro. This is heavy duty. You want me to kill a cop for $10,000 for 10K? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm already like, mm, no thanks. And not to mention, this is my bro. So like, <laughs> it's very bold. It's very audacious to to make this make this pitch. But she tries it. Um, according to the DOJ criminal complaint, Maseroni chatted up individual one on Facebook Messenger. Also bold as hell. You're using Facebook fucking Messenger. Yeah, it's encrypted. But see, it didn't work out. I, we're talking about the text messages right now. So. Don't do it. Not here. Not here. Not WhatsApp. Don't do that. You know, obviously Facebook Meta owns that part of that metaverse. Don't do that. Don't go there. So just don't do it. I really can't stress this enough. Don't fucking do it. Um, but um, on we're on Facebook Messenger between July 20th, uh, 2023 and August 16th of 2023 um, and offered him $10,000 in cash to find a hitman uh, who could get the job done. Also, I want to add here, when I, I will say something points to Odyssey, they add that I either via more transcripts that aren't really mentioned in Long Crime, but that maybe she wanted him to do more victims. So I don't know why Long Crime doesn't talk, talk about that in their article, but I feel like that's important because that kind of like that, that to me gave it more of a sinister bent to it, despite the fact that she does have a reason for wanting this guy dead. Not that that justifies it, but you know we're going to get there. But um, the fact that she was like, yeah, no, like it's almost like she's like, yeah, this is like, hey, the first one I need. But like, hey, if you do good here, you can make some more money or something. I don't know if that's maybe her doing tough talk or something, because definitely like she's she's in over her head. It's weird, too. I, I kind of almost want to hit the transcript almost real quick. You take care of business and you be a rich man. Later, bye. Kiss emoji. Individual one. Okay. <laughs> as dry as hell. Uh, also from individual one. I do hope that when we get rid of the victim for you, you don't roll o- uh, you you don't roll us over. Individual one still. It's all about trust. Sweet dreams, baby girl. Why does it sound so mmm? So mmm. That's so ugh, don't do that. Are you flirting? Are you guys falling in love? Like this is supposed to be a hit. Uh not hit and quit, but Maserati. I swear, you have other jobs for you. See, you have other jobs for you. So it's stated in the transcript, and I guess they kind of want me to read it and then pick it out. My bad. Mia culpa law on crime. I didn't, I'm, I'm being lazy. Um, swear my kids. No more text. And that's the end of this part of the transcript. So, I mean, that paints a little bit of this picture here that we're setting this up, but yet it also sounds like a meet cute. I would never, I, and don't get me wrong, I'm a, I'm a, what is it, I, how do you describe it, a millennial boomer, I believe, that's what I bracket myself as, I definitely text and use emojis all the time, I'm very cringe, but like, best believe, if I'm doing the unthinkable here, I'm going to the dark bazaar, and I'm going to order myself a hitman here, I'm gonna find myself a body man, I'm not putting, putting a kissy emoji in there, okay, that's crazy, that's, crazy a day later Maseroni, a bank manager was caught on video at a walgreens in orange county new york and brought um two thousand five hundred dollars in cash with her to be wired from a western union kiosk under the brief that the money would go to hitman individual one all right let's scroll ahead uh, the would-be plot completely unraveled in the ensuing days as both the target of the plot and his wife went to the United States Embassy in Guyana to report that Maseroni, the defendant, had placed, had placed a hit on the victim. 
to take place as soon as July 25th, 2023. And the married couple said they learned about this information from individual one. So he immediately snitched on you, dude. You know why? Because he's a fucking homie. What a fucking mistake you made, dude. The audacity. I cannot I cannot say that enough. How bold it was to be like, hey, here's $10,000. Be Judas. Like, <laughs> dumb. Uh, just very head-ass. I'm so sorry to say that, but like, no, I'm not. Like, boo, you fucked up. Um, let's see. Um, then the DA gets involved. Um, he's on the other line. He can speak Guyanese. They speak Guyanese. This all goes bust. Um, I, I kind of want to get into the why. Um, let's see here. Scrolling ahead. Um, the defense also claimed that Maseroni acted completely out of character and in a state of rage because she was provoked, provoked by the brother-in-law through 20, through 25 year systematic harassment. Maseroni described the man as scorned because he tried and failed to marry her when she was 15, she said, uh, or 15. She said this offended her parents. So the suitor was turned down but went on to marry her 16-year-old sister instead. The documents assor- uh, asserted that the man arranged for Maseroni to marry two different men described as sometimes unemployed alcoholics, uh, marriages that failed. Uh, though she tried to advance professionally in banking, the man continued to ruin her professional life by systematically calling her employment in, um, in an attempt to get her fired, Maseroni said, putting the term victim in scare quotes. Also, I love this because I get to talk about scare quotes for a quick second. I, I, that's funny. Like, is this weird that it's a term? Like, why can't they just be quotations that just have, you know, you know, in, indications that they're fake or whatever? I just think that scare, scare quotes becoming a thing just made me chuckle when I first heard it on a podcast. But anyway, here I am talking about it on my podcast. Poorly, of course, as I am wont to do. Uh, the man spent t- the last 25 years attempting to ruin Miss Maserone's, uh, Miss Maserone in every way possible, including but not limited to harassing her beautiful and highly intelligent eldest daughter, who the victim attempted to get disqualified from a beauty pageant uh, and is a dean's list student in college, the defense memo said. What prevents this man from calling up a law school she intends to apply to? Implying to. What prevents this so-called victim from... Yeah, th- that's that's scare quotes there, you know? Because it's like, is he really a victim or he's making it up? There you go. Yeah, I can use it in a sentence and explain it that way. Uh, from continuing uh, his disparaging remarks on social media of Miss Maseroni's youngest daughter or husband. Nothing is the answer, the memo added. And so, I mean, that adds at least reasoning for why she thought and 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 felt compelled to say, hey, I'm going to hire a man to kill this man or hire this man to hire a man to kill this man. I got to get it done. He's got to, he's got to go. He's got to go. Um, but like I said, don't do it. Don't, don't hire a hitman every time it's going to get you into trouble and it's not going to get you what you want. Even in the situations that we've covered where you do get your fucking dark wish and you do find that hitman and it happens. It's not worth it. It doesn't work out for you. So just don't. And then you have a body on your hands even worse, dude. Like nine and a half years is a lot, but guarantee you it would have been a hell of a lot worse if you even got what you wanted, Miss Maseroni. So, you know, from hey, so hey, that's just what I'm telling you. That's just what I'm saying. Uh, crazy that I made this episode go so long. I really stretched the dough. Wow, 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 we were. Uh, but that's the episode. That's all I got for you. Um, let's see. Patreon.com slash Isaiah News. Uh, if you'd like to help out, support the effort, you know, it's a tip jar. I listened to the daily. They talked about tipping. I thought that was funny because, um, you know, technically my little hobby here is kind of a uh, part of the tip economy. <laughs> a little bit there. Actually, it's crazy, man. Tip people. You should tip people. And I say this as a person. I feel guilty because I'm a lousy tipper. And yes, I blame it on poverty. But you could always make the fucking retort of like, Isaiah, you go out to eat. You make that choice. Especially now. You're a grown ass man. You know you can cook now. You can just eat your fucking gruel at home. I do try to. But I also like, especially since the pandemic, I do try to 
uh, do better. Like I used to be, and I, this is me, you know, Mia culpa confession. These are my confessions. I used to be a 10, 15 percenter. I try to now at least be a 15, 20 percenter. I try. I try. I, God knows I try. Okay. But, um, you know, like I said, <laughs> it's buying <Biden> inflation. <laughs> All right. Anyway, that's that's uh you know you can tip me you can tip me you should tip me um let's see Isaiah News One at gmail dot com that's the free way to hit me up if you want to yell at me and tell me why you're not gonna tip me I, I I will accept that I might not answer it though I don't really check the the Google the Gmail but hey it's there uh but free ways socially to hit me up find the podcast you can find that out yourself via X the everything app. Or the um, Facebook Metaverse. You can find me there. Uh, I have a Tumblr. I have uh, all those things. All those fun things. Like I said, other episode. You're not going to find me on Telegram, though. Fuck that. Uh, no. Anyway. Um, let's see. Please subscribe. Please, 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 please. please zero Riz. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube. It really helps. Um, leave a like. Leave a comment. Oh, my God. I went too long here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm on my knees. Um... Hopefully I see you soon for some more good news. I love you. Bye-bye.